Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Shovel brawl deck featuring Ikoria's very own bounty hunter. Shovel's a 1-3 with death touch, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, if our opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, we can put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls, and whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, we gain 3 life and get to draw a card. So the goal of the deck is to get Shovel in play as soon as possible, and combine them with cheap removal spells to take out opposing creatures and gain incremental card advantage. And one type of removal spell that plays particularly well with Shovel are these bite effects, like Rabbit Bite, where a creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature we don't control, and even though Shovel only has one power, because he has Death Touch, dealing one damage to an opposing creature is enough to take it out, so Shovel combines quite nicely with these removal spells like Rabbit Bite, I've got Nature's Way, Ram Through, Warbriar Blasting is an actual fight effect, but it does also add to toughness, and we've got Primal Knight as well, so all those play quite nicely nicely with our commander. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we don't have that many creatures in the deck because the focus is mainly on removal spells alongside Shovel, so we don't have room for a ton of creatures, but we do have some Planeswalkers to help us close out the game as well. But in the creature department we do have Lenor Elves to give us a bit of acceleration, Knight of the Abel Legion can also gain Death Touch if we use the ability, and it's just a nice cheap efficient creature to get in play early. Then Jolrael also plays nicely if we manage to draw cards with Shovel's bounties, as we get to make a 2-2 cat token whenever we draw our second card each turn. And then Scavenging Ooze is on cleanup duty, hang selling all those creatures that we killed with Shovel. Then moving up the curve we've got Murderous Rider which can take out a creature or Planeswalker and can be played as a creature afterwards as well. Reclamation Sage can take out artifacts or enchantments. And then at 4 mana we've got Bone Picker which we can often play for a single black mana as a 3-2 with Flying and Death Touch. Death Touch once again plays nicely with those green removal spells. And then we've got Gonti, Lord of Luxury, which can steal a card from the opponent's library and is also 2-3 Death Touch. Questing Beast also 4-4 with Death Touch, Haste and Vigilance and a whole host of other abilities. So we do have some Death Touch synergy in the deck for sure. And then at 5 mana, Elder Gergroth is just a very efficient creature that can sort of win the game by itself. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we do have plenty of removal of course, we've already mentioned a few of them. We also get to play with Mox Amber because our commander is so cheap, so this can make black or green mana if we have Shovel in play and we've got some other legendary creatures and planeswalkers to go with it. Then we've got Bloodsheaf's Thirst as a one mana removal spell that we can also kick for two and a black to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. Fatal Push, a nice one mana removal spell from Kaladesh Remastered. Then we've got a few ways of protecting Shovel, because we do rely on Shovel staying around, so we do need some ways to protect Shovel in case the opponent has removal, so Malachi Rebirth is one way to do it, but we also have Blossoming Defense to give plus 2 plus 2 and Hexproof, as well as the Ranger's Guile giving plus 1 plus 1 and Hexproof, so those are all ways to protect Shovel. Then we've got Thought Seize as some hand disruption, and then Primal Might we mentioned, one of our fight effects that can also deal additional damage in the late game. And then moving up the curve, we've got Cast Down to destroy target non-legendary creature. Since we don't really get to play with Heartless Act, which is a nombo with Shovel, because if we put a bounty counter on opposing creature, we won't be able to kill it with Heartless Act, so that's why we have Cast Down. Feed the Swarm can kill a creature or enchantment, so that's also a nice one. Then we've got Nature's Way, Rabbit Bite, a Ram Through, and Warbriar Blessing as those fight or bite effects, and Arcane Signet can also help us ramp. Then at 3 mana we've got Soul Shatter as a way to maybe get rid of Hexproof creatures, which are otherwise difficult for our deck to interact with. Fraxin Arena can draw additional cards, also plays quite nicely with our Jolrael, which can then make additional cat tokens. We've got Maelstrom Pulse as an all-purpose removal spell, and then at 4 mana Hagra Mauling, which we can also play as a land. We've got Vraska Swarm's Eminence, which also plays nicely with all those Death Touch creatures in the deck, as they'll get a plus one plus one counter whenever they deal damage to a player or planeswalker, and also spawns Assassin tokens, which can take out planeswalkers if they deal damage to them. And then at 5 mana we've got Yogmod's Vile Offering, which requires a legendary creature or planeswalker in play in order to cast it, but then we get to destroy a creature or planeswalker, as well as return a creature or planeswalker from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, so very powerful 5 mana sorcery. And then Nissa who shakes the world can generate extra mana and help us close out the game. And then topping off our curve we've got Garrick Cursed Huntsman which can also take out creatures or generate wolf tokens. We've got a Vraska Relic Seeker which can generate pirates or take out creatures, artifacts and enchantments. And then Casualties of War can also destroy all sorts of permanents. 
And then going over the mana base real quick, we've got Castle Lochthwain as an additional card draw engine, 8 swamps, 8 forests, a whole bunch of dual lands here with Blooming Marsh, Jungle Hollow, Overgrown Tomb, Temple of Malady, Hoodland Cemetery, as well as Command Tower and Fable Passage, which can also enable a revolt for our Fatal Push. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Tatiova deck, so some sort of ramp deck. Hopefully they've got some creatures we can kill. This hand is okay. We'll fetch up a forest right away. And then turn two, have to decide between playing Shovel or Jolrel. Probably gonna play Shovel first. Hope they have some mana elves we can kill. Explore. That one we cannot kill, sadly. Can hang on to Mox Amber for now. Next turn we might play Fraxian Arena. Uro also doesn't really die to my removal here, but we do have Scavenging Ooze to exile us from the graveyard at least. And a Thomatic Compass. So, I think I do want to play Phyrexian Arena. Seems better than playing the Ooze here. Playing turn to Jorel into Phyrexian Arena could have also worked out better if they didn't end up playing any mana creatures. Tatiova draws a card right away, but we'll get to put a bounty on it. And then can play Mox Amber into Hagra Mauling. Uh, that seems fine. And then we'll put a Warbriar Blessing on top to have access to more removal in the future. And maybe next turn we'll play the Ooze to exile Uro. Manning of Dominaria is going to fill the graveyard some more. Put Statiova back in hand. Alright, so... I can play Nissa, Which seems powerful here. And then I could play Jolrel or Ooze afterwards. I guess the problem is I kind of need to exile Uro right now before they mill two more cards. But I cannot go Nissa, play Ooze, and activate Ooze. I'll be one mana short. But maybe it's still worth it to get Nissa out there. And then we can play Jolrel instead. Mending can get back Azusa or Uro. Gets back Azusa. And there's Tatiova again, making a zombie with Field of the Dead and transforming Compass. All right. Ooh, Casualties of War. Now that's a draw. Don't mind if I do. So does for Creature, enchantments, and lands. And then we gotta take out Field of the Dead here before it's too late. Oh, 
Untap my forests. Get in. And then we still have scavenging ooze to uh, exile the opponent stuff. We'll exile Ura right away. And then pass a turn. Opponent is looking at my Nissa. Maybe they have a way to steal it. Or they wanted to check when we can ultimate. It's at minus eight. Yeah, that casualty is a strong feel of the dead was a very big deal. Still have two ooze activations available. Oracle reveals Temple of Mystery. And a Field of Ruin. Which they kept on top. They can play Azusa, play Archer Raska, so they are kind of going off here. But we'll get to take out probably the Oracle next turn. Temporal Sundering would have been good too. And we'll exile Field of the Dead, since my opponent's likely to have ways to replay lands from the graveyard too. Oracle of Moldaya gets a bounty counter. What if I just activate Jolrel? Would we have lethal? We're probably getting close. Six, twelve, eighteen. I think they're just dead. So let's make some mana. Plus, I guess I can Nature's Way, which replaces itself. And then we'll kill Oracle. And then attack with everyone. And then before damage we can activate Jorel. And that should pretty much seal the deal. The Nyssa lands also get three additional powers since those are plus one plus one counters. Alright, sweet, so we managed to beat a blue-green ramp deck with Tatiova, and we made good use of our bounty counters. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Nylea Keen-Eyed deck. So it's not going to be easy to get rid of the Indestructible God, but uh, it probably means they've got some other creatures we can take out and get some bounties from. The sand seems totally fine. Got to decide to maybe play one of these dual face cards as a land. Mono green probably doesn't have a ton of removal, so don't expect to need rebirth. And then we'll keep the mauling. Turn to Paradise Root. Sadly, that one has hexproof, so if they don't tap it, I wouldn't be able to put a bounty counter on it. But we'll still play shovel. So I'm hoping they just play a creature we can put a bounty counter onto, or at the very least tap the Paradise Road. Lenor Visionary draws a card. Alright, I mean... It's still fine to uh, take out the Visionary here, we don't have anything better to do. And then between Cast Down and Nature's Way, I guess we'll go with the Nature's Way.
for mana, they could play Nylea without tapping Paradise Druids. Nylea wouldn't be a creature, so we wouldn't be able to put a counter on it with Shovel, which would actually be bad if Nylea ever gets a counter, because then Shovel's going to be stuck, unable to take out any more creatures and get their bounties. 4-3 Paradise Druids. Vivian gets a bounty. Alright, so now what? Hagra Mauling sadly doesn't take out Planeswalkers. I would like to keep a Ranger Scale to protect Shovel from Vivian's Minus. It's probably not gonna happen, so I guess instead I could send Shovel and Vivian to trade. So I guess we'll just play Vraska then. Could send Shovel at Vivian. If my opponent trades, at least Nylea won't be a creature yet if they play her next turn with their Devotion. And this way Shovel picks up a plus one counter. I'm made for conflicts like this. So we'll see. Having the Assassin token in play definitely gives us a way to potentially threaten Vivian. But yeah, if they play Nylea, they've got five Devotion, so Nylea will be a creature. And then they can kind of hide behind a hexproof creature and an indestructible creature to protect their Vivian. Which is going to be pretty tough. Alright, Vivian's going to minus to take out Shovel. Now Vivian still has a bounty counter, so if I decide to play Shovel next turn and take out Vivian, we'll still get to draw a card right away. It's going to be an Elder Gargroth. That's fine. So, uh, this turn... Could send the Assassin after Vivian. Kill Gargroth with probably Hagra Mauling. And then hopefully next turn we get to play Shovel and be able to use removal right away. Could also... I suppose play Hagra Mauling as a land, so next turn I'm guaranteed 6 mana. And then this turn just use Cast Down on Gergroth. That might be better. And then... I think I Cast Down now. And then attack Vivian. Alright, Vivian down. Now there's no bounty counters for us to get immediate value from uh, Shovel, but that's okay. Alright, so 7 mana for the opponents. We do have Ranger's Guile available. As well as Ram Through, which we can use at instant speed with our assassins to maybe take out a creature in response to a fight, for example. Finale for four. And what does it get? Maybe a questing beast? To take out Vraska. In which case we can ram through. Ooh, gets a Ronas as the Indomitable instead. So our opponent's got a lot of indestructible and hexproof stuff here, which makes it difficult to leverage Shovel. So, yeah, attacking with the Assassin's not great here. So I guess we're just going to make some Pirates with Vraska then. Could play Gonti and Jolrel. Playing Vraska might be better. Goes up to 8 loyalty. Yeah, it's probably okay. Double Vraska in play. Is it finally time for Nylea? So Ronos can pay 3 mana to give another creature plus 2 plus 1 trample. So can't target himself. 
I'm fine trumping Ronos with my pirates. Alright, there's Nylea. Not a creature just yet. And yeah, we can keep making pirates. And next turn threaten the ultimate. I guess for now play Gonti as opposed to Shovel, since Shovel's probably not going to do much for us. Harbinger or Ulvenwald Hydra. Uh, Hydra seems better. Alright, let's, uh, I guess I could attack with my assassins, since I would be happy trading for Paradise Druids. And they'll both pick up a plus one counter. Alright, still have Ranger's Guile to protect one of our creatures, Nylia goes digging. Can only find creatures, so symbiosis doesn't count, but they are deciding whether they want to keep it on top or put it in the graveyard. Keeps it on top. So my opponent needs to pressure Vraska here. Otherwise they might just be dead to the minus ten. Interesting. I guess they just wanted to land, so they're playing Symbiosis untapped for a Vivian Reed. Turns Nylia into a creature. You can't stop nature. So now they can use Rona to trample over and make sure I can't ultimate Vraska, but the more creatures they attack with, the more they are vulnerable on the way back. So just Nylia attacking, so if they pump with Ronas, would be 7 power trample. So if I block with all, then I could still ultimate. So I can triple block and then use Ranger's Guile to save one of my three creatures. Next turn ultimate. And maybe even use Ram Through to make sure we can get in the last point of damage. Alright, sweet, and our opponent explodes. So Vraska, Relic Seeker, Ultimate for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing a Nethroi Apex of Death deck. So a Graveyard Reanimator deck. What do we think of our hands? Uh, it's okay. Blossoming Defense to protect against removal. Bit of removal ourselves. And hopefully the opponent presents a few creatures we can kill early on. So I don't have double green, so I can't play Shovel and keep a Blossoming Defense necessarily. So the question is if we play Shovel anyway. I mean, Ooze seems great against the Nethroid deck, so we probably want to protect Ooze for later. So if they want to kill Shovel, they can. Price of Fame for two mana, that's a good one. So we need to find more green mana. Ooh, Arena was a great draw. Opponent kept both cards on top with his surveil too. And the funny thing is we can play Hagra Mauling for three mana since my opponent hasn't played a basic yet. Although I might just play Mauling as a land here to keep hitting my land drops. And then for now, I guess we'll thirst uh, elves. Could also play ooze. Don't know if I should. 
I guess it's fine. Even if we don't have Blossoming Defense up. Still no basics. And a Guardian Project. Alright, there's a forest. So... Questing Beast seems fine. Actually, we could just feed the Swarm Guardian Project since it's an enchantment. It's pretty mean, but... Don't actually hate it. And then just get in for three here. And keep a blossoming defense. Yeah, I'll just keep a blossoming defense. I don't need to exile their non creature cards here necessarily. And then Questing Beast seems fine, still get to keep up defense. So Fraxian Arena is definitely pulling us ahead. Languish means I can save one of my two creatures. I mean, Ooze might be more relevant here against a Nethroid deck. And then, opponent's at 15, can go Shovel, play Mox Amber, still have a few Ooze activations, or just tap out for Bone Picker. Probably want to keep up Ooze activations. Could also, I guess, activate Castle end of turn, and then just attack for 3. It's going to be a painful castle activation, but it might be worth it. Still no creatures in the opponent's graveyard to get back. And an Underrealm Lich. Alright. That's when it's going to be difficult to kill and get a bounty from. So finding a Soul Shatter would be ideal. Don't have a choice, we have to put a bounty counter on it. Casualties of war. Ooh, wow. <laughs> That's just amazing. Soul Shatter off the top. Perfect answer here. I mean, I could still let them pay the four life if I want to, which might be correct. So I can Maelstrom Pulse, make them pay for life and tap it, and then Soul Shatter anyway and play one mana Bone Picker. Huh, I guess, let's see, my opponent's at 8, can I just kill them? Yeah, we can Primal Might for 4, and that's 8 damage. Alright, it's a little disappointing, all things considered, when we top deck the Soul Shatter, but I guess we'll just win the game here. And then we don't have to fight if we don't want to. Didn't even play my land yet, so we could have done one more damage. But uh, yeah, there we go. My opponent's gonna go out on their own terms. I can appreciate that. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Muldrotha, the Gravetide deck. And we've got a very efficient hand here, all one mana cards. So we get to go turn on Elves, turn to Shovel and keep up. Either Removal or Ranger's Guile. So I should probably shock with Overgrown Tomb here to give myself the most options for next turn. Ideally they play a mana creature. Just island into Arcane Signet instead. Alright, so... Don't really expect to fatal push end of turn since we'll probably want to wait for the bounty counter. 
So I'll just play Shovel and keep up uh, Ranger's Kyle. Now I really need my opponent to play some creatures here, because my hand's all removal. Woodland Cemetery comes into play tapped. Fable Passage can enable Revolt for Fatal Push. Ashok shows up. That one we can Blood Chief's Thirst next turn. So I don't hate just pushing the token here. And then we'll uh, kill Ashok and draw a card. So we're not dealing a ton of damage, but if they've got more creatures in hand, we've got those covered. It's going to be a search for Ascanta into Maelstrom Pulse. Guess I'm replaying Shovel next turn. Search is going to fill the graveyard for Muldrotha as well. Keeps the card on top. And scries to the top as well. And just plays out a Murder Strider. Alright. Happy to take that out. Got a row Murder Strider, probably want to save that for a Planeswalker. And then for now, Rabbit Bites. Maybe they intended to actually kill Shovel here with the Murder Strider instead of playing it out. Alright, still nothing. I mean, if they killed Shovel, I would have just replayed it this turn. But uh, probably it would have been better for the opponents. There is Muldrotha. And a thirst to kill Shovel. Fair enough. So a six mana Shovel means I won't be able to kill Muldrotha. Uh, so might as well Murder Strider now. Search is pretty close to transforming, which is a bit of an issue. Oh, I drew the ram through, so I would have been able to go shovel into ram through. At this point, I mean, I might still play shovel anyway if their plan is to replay Muldrotha next turn. Seems fine. And then I could keep up one of my removal spells, or I could attack for one. I'll attack for one. Puts a Jolrel in the graveyard. And a Mending of Dominaria is gonna fill the graveyard some more. Land Essence Scatter. And do they play Jolrel? I hope so. Nope. <laughs> Fatal push to kill Shovel once again. Poor Shovel can't catch a break. Casualties of War. Now that is quite the draw, if I do say so myself. I could wait for the opponent to flip Oscanta next turn, and then we get to kill Oscanta as a land, mending, enchantment, arcane, signet, artifact. Is that too greedy? I don't think so. 
and just play shovel again. I imagine Oskanta will transform. And then hopefully they play a creature here that we get to kill. And there's Jolrel. So they're just gonna activate Oskanta instead of uh, playing out Moldrotha. Finds a growth spiral, that's fine. Alright, so we should finally get to draw a card from Shovel's Bounty. This is going to be a juicy casualties. Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Land. Creature, Enchantment, Land. Sweet. And a thought sees, but my opponent explodes. All right. Well, Shovel persevered and finally got there. So yeah, Shovel Brawl. It's uh, definitely meant to play against other creature decks. So we mostly played against green decks today, which is definitely the preferred matchup. If you play against a very controlling decks that have very few creatures, you're probably not going to have a great time. So it is definitely matchup dependent. But against those creature decks, it's usually a good time. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.